Greetings everyone, back with more Factorio Demystified, focusing in on the completed logistic system. We have now unlocked all of the available chests, and this is now a very powerful tool indeed. If we were so inclined, we could build an entire very effective factory without transport belts at all now, just utilizing the chests and robots to move the items around. We're going to stop short of that type of revamping, but let's see what some of the usefulness here is going to be. Now, by way of review, we've already talked about roboports, construction and logistic robots, and the first couple types of chests that are available in the game, storage and pass provider. Any detailed questions about those, just check the link in the description below. But the storage gave us low priority source and destination. Also gave us the logistic filter, which we use quite a bit in our supply depot, limiting the chest to only one type of item and controlling our flow of material that way. The passive provider is only a source, not a destination, again, low priority, and is perfectly fine with letting the items sit in there indefinitely until they happen to be needed. The next ones that we now have that are new are the active provider chest, the requester chest, and the buffer chest. And the active provider is much like the passive provider but it's higher priority. It is the highest priority source, again, never a destination, but only the player is higher priority with our own inventory as a source. It's also active in the sense that it wants to push its items out. It's not happy for items to just sit in here indefinitely. It wants them to move. So if robots have nothing else to do, they will try to take items from an active provider chest and put them in long-term storage. So that's one of the aspects that can influence whether you want an active or a passive priority chest. Then we also have the requester chest. And this is essentially the same thing only on the destination side. It's never a source, only a destination, highest priority destination type of chest. Again, second only to the player. And these logistic requests work exactly as we would see for our own inventory. So we just select whatever item, however many of that we want to have stored here, and the robots will attempt to fulfill that request. Then the buffer is sort of a middleman or an in-between. It's pretty marginal edge case usage, but it still can be valuable. We have the passive provider and the requester functionality combined in one. So definitely very much a source and a destination and a middling level of priority for both. So why do we want this? Well, you can set up scenarios if you are making things complicated enough or you want to be detailed enough where you might have items go from storage to a buffer chest to either a requester chest or the player. And so you can delineate those priorities in terms of what you want moved when, or maybe you've got a longer distance to cover, so you want those particular graduated steps in place. If that's something you're looking for, buffer chest can really be helpful. So in putting this to practice, we are going to reprocess these used up uranium cells that we have been gradually accumulating over here in our nuclear plant area. We'll drop down a centrifuge, nuclear fuel reprocessing. Five of these used up cells will produce three uranium-238, which we can then essentially recycle into new fuel cells way back to the west where those are being produced. Now, a nice little trick here that we can use, we copy this and we can actually paste it onto the requester chest. And then it's actually going to automatically put the ingredients that might need. Now notice if we switch this to say, Covarex process, do the same thing. And then now it's going to put those in place. So that can be a really good way of not having to enter this manually, but just saying, I want this requester chest to grab whatever materials are needed to run this particular machine. That can be quite a fun quality of life item to utilize. But we're going to go back to the reprocessing, we're going to put our productivity modules in, and get this rolling. And now we need some sort of chest to operate as a source because we need to unload this uranium into a chest and then have the robots bring it to where it needs to go. So we definitely don't want to use a requester for that. 
we could potentially use any of the others, but storage or buffer, those are more of a long-term storage. We don't necessarily want that to happen. I'm gonna use a passive provider. We could also use the active provider one, but I'm gonna use passive provider for the uranium going to the west, and then active provider for the fuel cells coming back to the east so that they will pick up the fuel cells before the uranium if they have a choice between the two. And this is not at all necessary, but it's just the kind of thing you wanna think about when you're making a design what should be higher priority than the others, particularly if you're in a situation where the robots might get very busy, potentially. So we'll go ahead and load that in here. We also want to have, of course, a requester to take our uranium fuel cells when they arrive. So we'll do that, and you can load on there. And let's just set this. I mean, 50 of them should be more than enough, and there's going to be a lot more than that they'll unload off of this belt, but eventually they would run dry and we would need to bring in more with the robots. And then we can get rid of this belt entirely once it is emptied. But for all this to operate, we need to actually connect our network up, drop some more RoboPorts in a vaguely straight line. I'm not going to worry about powering them now, we're just going to get them in place. And we need this to go back to our whole uranium processing and fuel cell producing operation. So we'll just keep this rolling along. And then we can come right back down in here And this is all set up. Now we don't want this going. We, by the way, are doing our Coverex enrichment over here. And I've added these filter inserters, which I forgot initially, just to make sure that we've got the U-235 coming up here, the U-238 coming down here, and they don't get mixed in or anything. But we need a couple of items here. Now on this side, I'm gonna do the active provider, but then also a requester to bring items in. In fact, let's fast inserter there, normal one here, so this will be used at a little bit higher speed. And then voila. And eventually we should be seeing more items coming in as soon as we tell this what to take. Which is, I want you to have that stack of U-238. Then while we're waiting on that, we will run along here and get rid of this belt and connect up some power as we may need to stretch along to our robo ports. And here they come. Lovely little critters flying along and delivering our uranium where we need it to go. Now you might be thinking right about now, well, didn't you say before that you don't want too many of these robo ports stretched together? They'll have to recharge in the middle of the journey. We're having such small volume in what we're doing here that that really isn't going to matter. But let's say it did. Let's say we wanted to find a way to deliver across this distance using robots, but we were concerned about that. Well, there is another adjustment that we can make. Let's take down this robo port. Let's set it down again so that it's one square away. So this is actually not going to connect. Move our power pole over a little bit. And we're going to put down some new chests. So we're going to have a requester on either side of that divide, roughly again, in a straight line. And then we're also going to have a provider on either side of the divide. And passive there. Active here. Then make sure we have these going from the requester to the provider. So what's going on here is each of these is within its own RoboPort network. And this requester is going to get the uranium fuel cells. They move into this provider and then onto the reactor and vice versa here. Uranium 238 into this requester, into this provider, and then on to our assembly machine. And so what we can do here is 
No matter how large your factory is, you can split up into blocks like this. Like, let's say we wanted transport belts from our supply depot to reach anywhere in our factory. Well, we could just make groups of roboports, a few roboports at a time, and they a belt transfer system like this with all of the chests. And then they would be able to grab some of them and gradually move them to all the different areas so that no matter where I was, in the factory. I would be able to have belts delivered to me that were all sourced in the same place. They could all be built at the supply depot and then just robots dispersing them to wherever I might happen to be. So that can be a very effective way of controlling the flow through your factory virtually regardless of how big it happens to end up being. Another practical use is in the fuel for a train. This is working very similarly to what we just saw. We have a provider chest here. We have a requester here, so we no longer need the belt going back and forth. And whenever we don't have wood, we'll be able to use the nuclear fuel transported by our logistic bots. And not just here, but also at the other two stations. We don't have to worry about running belts down and we're not going to run out of fuel. Set there. And it's starting to fill up the one by the copper as well. Now it's worth noting that we could have a third type of fuel here. Nuclear fuel would just require one U-235 added to our rocket fuel. And if we look at the numbers on that, it's going to give us higher acceleration, a little bit higher top speed, and 1.21 gigajoules of power, which is 12 times the amount that we get from the rocket fuel, so it's a lot. And rumor has it, it's even enough to run a DeLorean. Let's consider for a bit what we might want to do if we just wanted to build a fresh production line, not take little bits and pieces and tweak on what we already have designed before. So just running off the chests and the robots, we could do something like this. And there are many, many ways to do it. This is just an outline skeleton. There's no actual product, nothing being produced in the system. But what we could have going on here is this requester chest could be bringing in with bots from wherever it gets them from the materials that these machines are going to run off of. Then we can put them into an active provider chest, which would then distribute them to all of these requester chests, which would be asking for what these assembly machines need. Inserters load them in, inserters take out the finished product into these providers, and then that product would go back into this requester. So then what we'd have at the end is everything that these machines are building would go right here into this requester, and then we could put it wherever we wanted to. We could use another inserter, get it into an active provider, have bots fly it off wherever. We could load it into trains. We could do it on a belt. We could do whichever direction we wanted to go, but this entire thing then would be running purely off of the bots. And for those who are out there wondering, well, what about beacons? We're going to get to those. Beacons and modules is going to be the next episode, but I wanted to just sort of present this, the standard, just using the logistics method, and then we will get into that as a little bit more advanced concept, because that is something that really this whole idea of using bots can shine very effectively in. That'll be coming up next. Thanks for watching, everyone.